testers uh, versus writers, pen test quality in assurance project. And we have on stage Gabriel Tanase from KPMG Romania. Hello. Um, just to, to also be sure that it works. Okay, good. Uh, not good. It works. Okay, good. So, after a very technical presentation, we'll switch to um, a more theoretical one. Uh, and um, I will make a parallel uh, between pen tests done um, as part of a cyber security or a cyber maturity uh, process and uh, some pen tests done many times just to check a regulatory requirement. So just a, a very short introduction. Um, I'm in KPMG for almost 15 years and uh, quite a long time ago I set up the uh, pen test team um, at the beginning with, uh, with colleagues from other KPMG offices abroad and uh, starting two uh, 2007 um, setting a, a fully independent team in Romania. Um, I have an information system audit background. Um, <coughs> sorry. So um, I, will, um, I will try to put the pen test in the context of information system audit and see exactly how it was um, implemented in Romania and make some references to a recent um, regulatory requirements. Yeah, um, so it was a new, uh, new regulatory requirement. I don't want to name it. This can be um, applied to any regulatory requirement um, in, uh, in Romania and not only. Uh, but what is important is that uh, although it, it started very well um, with um, the objective to bring security at the heart of the businesses uh, from the markets, um, from the regulated markets, um, combining and, and um, analyzing the IT risk and operational risk and how the IT risk impacted the operational risk within, uh, within the entities and uh, with a um, different approach based on the importance of the entities on the market. Uh, it did not continue it, um, the in, the in the same manner. Um, that requirement uh, asked for periodic, based on the risk category of the entities, periodic uh, information system audit and uh, penetration testing. And it was required that the information system auditor verifies and describe how the pen test was performed by a third party. Uh, yeah, it seems that my animation is not working, but anyway, we can, we can, we can continue like this. Um, so it was a, a build an um, IT auditors register um, and at this moment there are more than aud uh, 20 auditors um, already in that register. What is very interesting is that some of them are registered as individuals. Interesting approach, how someone can uh, contract a physical person, individual, because there's no mention like a, a PFA or some other type of, uh, of entity how they can contract um, in a different manner than employing maybe for a limited period of time. But um, some of the, those auditors um, came back and also registered as a, as a company and as an individual. No requirements for the pen test. Yeah. Um, coming a little bit back from to the standards, and I think that um, everyone can agree that real and, and um, the, the only standards which can be applied for auditing information systems and not processes and or other type of, um, of objectives for the audits are the ISACA standards. And here there are two, uh, two documents. One is the standard and the other one is the guidelines which define the way how the auditor should involve a third party and rely on, uh, on that th third party work and uh, meaning that third party being an, an expert where the auditor has no appropriate knowledge or experience. The standard defined 
uh, defines the, the uh, statements for this, the guidelines go into, into more details. Uh, here there are two, two slides I don't like usually, uh, with a lot of, of wording, uh, but those with um, the blue um, signs before are applicable for, um, uh, for our case. And I d just want to emphasize uh, two things. The auditors should be the one who applies for uh, uh, an external party help and should decide and should select that party, be sure that that is independent, that is not knowledgeable, and uh, can really rely on, on, um, on the work done. Um, and of course, decide on further way to report that, uh, that involvement. Yeah, uh, referring the, the work done by a third party or, um, or just including in the, in the report. Um, so this, this is also um, strength by the, the guidelines and, and provide inform information how to apply this, uh, this type of involvement. Also the independence. There are two types of independence requirements, organizational independence and uh, professional independence. And while organizational independence is about, uh, in, in simple words, it's about the, the auditor or the professional company not being involved in any consulting work for that, uh, that company, uh, for the audited. Uh, the personal independence and pro or professional independence uh, comes to uh, members of the audit team um, going from standards and professional requirements to um, personal relationship, like not having um, relatives in, in the board of uh, the audited entities. The requirements on, on our regulatory says that the auditor has to be capable to prove the independence, its independence. Uh, but in the same time, uh, they require the auditor to review that third party uh, report. But what if the pen test is not done by a third party uh, because there was no pen test on the uh, performed uh, on the uh, audited entity and the auditor includes the pen test in the audit process. Has the capabilities to do that by their team members or by someone else uh, and perform this type of, of uh, testing inside the audit. And of course, the results are the findings, vulnerabilities identified, without going into uh, assistance to solve, to address the vulnerabilities. Uh, is, this, is this a breach of independence? This is something that it's from, diff from some, some, for someone it's very clear. For others, it's not so clear. Um, they can say, yeah, it's a bit of independence because the responsibility is the entity, the audited entity to do the pen test and not the auditor. But if there is no pen test and the, the pen test is done in, inside the audit, what do you think? Is there an, an independence breach? Okay. Um, coming to third party pen test, we saw in, uh, in, our, um, in our experience, in our uh, projects, different approaches. There are companies which have a, a very mature cyber um, security testing process and they are doing uh, pen test for, um, for their own will to test the security status of their applications, their system, and not because someone is asking that. And there are entities which done the, for the first time a pen test. Um, everyone who did pen test can, can say that in most of the cases on a first time project, there is no report with low number of uh, findings and, and low risk findings. Yes, and most of them being low, ri low risk findings. Uh, but still we see such, such reports. And why do you think it's, it's this situation? Lack of experience, or maybe just trying to check a box. I've done that. And if you, as an auditor, receive such a report, what we can do? 
you have to take it because the law says you have to rely on the third party provided by the company. And in a final step, you have to issue uh, an assurance, an audit opinion that that system is somehow secure or not, or it complies with the regulation. But can you rely on such a report? What do you think? Yeah, but you need to recheck um, something in a, in a project where you knew from the beginning that you will have a, a pen test report from, from someone else and you do not plan such activities. Maybe the audit team which is uh, allocated to that, that project doesn't have someone with the capabilities to perform some retesting on that. And of course, any type of such test have, be, have to be agreed, agreed and, and authorized and so on. So it's not so easy to do pen test retesting or, or check uh, on the spot just before, because you, you receive an, a report which you realize that you can uh, not rely on. Okay. Uh, what we did, we tried before this, uh, this conference to, to make a very short um, survey and see what, what is the, um, the response or the, what are the responses uh, from different, uh, different person completing the survey. Um, we have here some, some results. If they, the, the respondee said they didn't perform vulnerability assessment or pen test, it was closed. No other question were um, further uh, shown to them. But about 80%, 88% said that they did such, such projects. And uh, for vulnerability assessment, you can see that um, the respondent said that it was a process to do one, two, three times uh, per um, Per, an, per year, and most of the projects were done with internal resources, which is actually the easiest way to do and kind of best practice. You can, anyone can, can buy a, um, a vulnerability scanner um, for, for applications or for network level, do that, um, have the reports from the scanners and, and um, this is it. Unless it is a different, the, the IT department or, or security department or internal resources are, um, are very, very limited in that organization. There is no need to take someone to do this uh, for you. What about pen test? So there were three main category, uh, doing pen test for once, uh, two to three times or even more. Uh, most of the times, these projects were done with external consultants and uh, the reason why the pen test was done uh, it was for of course a regulatory requirement more almost a half yes um, or other requirements like group requirements or internal procedures um, or um, or just because they wanted voluntarily what you can see here is that they did more than a half with external consultants they also did, uh, in this case, internal staff, it was also considered like group entities, yeah, group colleagues. Uh, and with such a situation as an auditor, if you receive such a pen test reports done by the group, um, do you take it in consideration or not? Are you capable to judge on the independence of that report or not? Because still it's, it's a group um, resource and you as an auditor have to be independent and f um, as someone consider, not even do the pen test. But you should somehow rely on something that is done by group stuff. Is this an independent or not? Or independence breach? I don't know. It still has to be decided and, and see in the future how this will be treated because uh, at this moment, I cannot provide you a very clear answer. If we take by the standards, you as an auditor being independent, you cannot rely on that. If we consider our regulation in, in Romania, you are even mandatory to rely on that if the client provides the report. Yes, 
it's good. The, the regulatory had the objective not to put someone to pay twice for a pen test, doing as a, their regular process of cybersecurity testing and also inside an audit. It's very true and, and it, it was a very good approach and a very good idea not to, to uh, burden the financial efforts for those, those companies. But still, in the end, what an auditor should accept for, uh, uh, for his work and not, should not necessarily be forced by, by this, even not um, in, in compliance with international standards. Other responses. Um, what was the deliverables in addition to the report? And I can, I can tell you, uh, I, I took this uh, very recent uh, from the, the results, just trying to uh, gather as much as uh, possible the answers. So it was proof of concept, technical presentation, top management presentation, and other. And you can see that proof of concept, that, that was a multiple answer possibility. And proof of concept is the, the, the um, most used case and others actually there is no other, there is no other uh, deliverable except of these two type of presentations and the demo the proof of concept um, and about the methodology everyone selected of ASP and also you can see that there is the um, ISCOM methodology uh, for open open, open source uh, systems uh, SANS and offensive security other, yeah, could be also other methodologies. Um, here there are also, there's a, co a question, how do you evaluate a pen test report? And um, I don't know if you can read, yeah, but uh, it's like the ba based on the number of vulnerabilities identified, the vulnerabilities exploited, um, the high risk vulnerability exploited, the complexity of the vulnerabilities exploited, so not necessarily only high risk, but how, how, it was, um, how easy it was to exploit those. Uh, based on the recommendation to solve the vulnerabilities, methodology and risk metrics. So as expected, a number of vulnerabilities exploited and the complexity are the, the most, um, uh, were uh, selected by the most respondents. Uh, so no surprise here. What is your conclusion after a report with low number of findings and low risk? If the, the uh, system is secure, the pen tester did a poor job. So you can see there were a few which selected that the pen tester did a, pure job, uh, um, a poor job. Uh, yes, it is possible. It's not necessarily um, something that we conclude uh, only based on, on this, uh, but Still, there were some, uh, some which re responded like this, so probably they had more information on their cases. Do you believe that a third party can evaluate how a pen test was performed only based on the report? And mo almost half responded that yes. Few responded no. Only if the, the report is huge, no one. Only if the um, vulnerabilities presented are, ex are exploited and not only identified, like in, in a vulnerability case, a vulnerability assessment case, and um, if the report is well written. The interesting response. I was expected almost no one to, to respond to that. Well written. What does it mean? Maybe even for this regulatory, requirements, um, someone will hire people who know to write reports to make references to methodologies, like OVASP. I did in compliance with OVASP. Me as an auditor or anyone else as an auditor, pen tester, can say, oh, it's not good because I don't trust OVASP or something? I don't think so. It's a worldwide recognized methodology. I was quite, quite um, surprised by this this type of response. Well written. Maybe we'll in the future uh, writers will be hired. And if you can provide 
uh, the assurance based on such a report, only on, on the pen test report. Um, more than half says yes. As an auditor, I can say it depends. But in many cases, no. But still, it's, it's something that um, maybe in the future have to be clear, uh, clarified and see how we, we can uh, we can continue with this because it, everything started with a very good ideas and very good approach, trying to segment the, the entities, not to burden the little ones and, and um, based on the risk category, but ended up in something that can be uh, not a very, not a technical approach, but still just having a writing team to, to write good reports. Doesn't matter what is in, in those. <coughs> and then you can just take some, some type of vulnerability described there, and it's well written. So probably I can easily say no, then yes, to, to rely on such a report. As a conclusion, or maybe start discussing. Oh, this is working now, the animation. Independence. Is the pen test conflicted with the audit service? What if the pen test is part of the audit? Usually it's not conflicted. Unless, maybe with a new audit reform, unless there are special type of entities listed, it doesn't matter, and, and it's, it, it's no point to go into details now in terms of independence and, and this type of requirement. But usually, pen tests can be associated to a very technical audit. Reliance. Can an auditor place reliance on a first-time report? Low number of findings, low risk, can assess the quality of the work done based on such a report? I don't know. I can, again, just to be um, positive, I can say it depends. But I'm more tentative to be drastic on, on response side and say no. It may be the cases when you know that team who, who did that, that project, and only because there is such a, let's say, lucky situation, you can rely on a report knowing that those guys are doing a good job. Yeah, based on previous projects and, and so on. You, it may be the case. But if it's not such a case, can you? I think no. You cannot assess the quality of the work only based on the report. And usually on a pen test, even the, um, the documentation on the back of the report, yeah, the, the, those which, which is done for the, let's say, for the project file uh, by the, the team, it's quite limited. It's just maybe a list of test, uh, tests performed, what worked, what, what it didn't work, and, and this is it because everything is in the pen test report. Can an auditor place reliance on a pen test report received from someone, a third party, even done by the internal group, internal resources from the group. Again, I can say it depends, but I'm more tempted to say no. And it's not because I'm a negative person, it's because if we take the standards and the principle which were presented, it's the auditor responsibility to select the expert, to involve where it does not have experience, knowledge, and, and cannot do the work, and to be sure that th those are independent or... So it's, it's his responsibility. How can the auditor conclude on such case? He can. He can say, yes, it is, I have this report. Based on that, it's okay. But finally, it's his responsibility. And maybe he is forced to do something like this based on something that is not written well in terms of uh, regulatory requirement. And 
the final point is that the driver for pen test in this moment as a large market, it's regulatory. I know and many of the, the guys doing pen test knows companies which have a process in place and are doing pen test for quite a number of years, testing every change, every new application. Of course, we are talking about um, important companies and not every, uh, every startup because for in such cases may not be financial, uh, financial um, sustainable. But we know a lot of cases when big companies are doing that as a cyber maturity process. But still, those which are still quite big companies are doing just to check a mark. And I know that also there were incidents not necessarily going to public in, in Romania, but because of these checks. So I think that we, we have a few moments um, and I did a, the presentation short hoping that we can even try to start a discussion on these matters at this point. Thanks. So questions or things to discuss. Hi. How, how do you see um, an, the situation of an outsourcing company with an independent uh, team of pen testers? Um, how do you see this working in a company that always has to um, be on time with releases for the client or being at the client's uh, uh, always uh, uh, trying to fulfill the client needs that sometimes doesn't understand security at all or doesn't even care about. Okay, so for this type of outsourcing companies, there are two situations. Um, first of all, usually the companies or the clients does not request like a pen test report. Uh, it's more like a different type of report. It's called uh, ISAE 3402. That report is a um, specific report for uh, auditors and uh, it contains description of controls with uh, audit procedures done and everything uh, presented in a, in a manner where you do not disclose as an as a auditor the any confidential information. And one of those control can be, yes, pen test is performed regularly. So this is usually the type of report clients are, are uh, requesting. Sometimes there are situations for special type of clients when they do request pen test, uh, pen test reports. And based on what, based on the example you, you mentioned, is that with a good planning you can achieve that. And um, I do have an example even, not one, even more um, from, from our experience where we, we managed to um, to respond on a very short notice to such request and perform the testing um, in, in, in time. Yeah. And there are a lot of uh, ways how to, to um, let's say, make the, how to make the arrangements to be able to, uh, to respond for the, the supplier, pen test or not only pen test, to, to respond on a very short notice.